because you're late, you have to be the moderator. No. <laughs> When you've been doing comics this long, you can't be late. I think I've been doing comics the least time of all of you. Or maybe you, when did you start We're doing comics? We're web comic artists. Why are why are anybody expecting us to be on time? That's true. Yeah. Isn't on time? Yeah. I'm only three hours late with all my comics. Are, <laughs> <laughs> okay. are we ready to get started? Sure. Okay. Cool. Um, I guess by virtue of coming here last, I get to be the. I get to start off. Do you like the mic? Oh yes. Um, can everyone hear me? Okay. All right, um, welcome to the Webcomic Veterans Panel. Um, I guess we'll start by going across the table and introducing ourselves and talk. And ex also, please everybody tell how long you've been doing webcomics. I am Sheenan Garrity. I um, started out doing a comic called Narbonic in 2000, and I currently do one called Skin Horse. So I have been um, doing a daily web strip for 11 years now. I had one year that I was not doing a daily strip, though. So. It's really only 10 solid years of daily strips. You're in deep. <laughs> um, I'm Jenny Breeden. I do a web comic called The Devil's Panties. It's a journal comic. And uh, in October 8th, I'll be on my 10th year of doing a daily comic. So you're the junior member. Oh. Uh, my name is Christopher Baldwin. Uh, yeah, and I haven't been drinking for. <laughs> wait, which, which panel is this? Wait, wait. wait. Uh, uh, I started doing web comics in '96. I did a comic strip called Bruno Daily for 11 years, and then I did a comic strip called Little D Daily for six years. And now I've been doing a science fiction comic called Space Trawler for a year and three quarters. Um, and uh, so there's some overlap there. But uh, and Bill, you're like the you're the king of Zoth. Well, yeah. since, since September 1995, I've been doing Kevin and Kel. And you do two other daily strips. And two other daily, daily strips, strips, which uh, <laughs> I've been doing since 1984 and 1988. So you do three comics a day. And three comics a day. And two of them are newspaper comics, yes. and the other one's online. And as what's happening with cartoons, they're kind of merging. Uh, Kevin and Kel is in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution to print. My two newspaper comics, they both have online presences. So everything's converging. Mm -hmm. OK. so. Bill and Chris, you've been at this the longest. So can you tell us like how you got it into your heads to start doing web comics? Because um, it didn't exist. It did, yeah, it, 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 there, it wasn't. There weren't a lot of comics on the. There was barely an internet. So well, like, how did this start? Well, well who remembers CompuServe? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I was doing two newspaper strips, but there's a problem with doing long stories in newspaper comic strips because people don't have that day's strip in front of them. The, pre the previous day's strip in front of them is already in the recycling. They only have that day's strip in front of them. So to do a long story, um, you have to, the readers have to have access to the entire story or else they get lost. That's why with newspaper story strips, they go on for months and months and maybe one thing happens because you're always having to recap. But when I went on CompuServe, I realized that you know, you can have archives of a strip. And if you have an archive, the reader has all of the strips. And then you can do longer stories and you don't have to endlessly recap. Because if a reader misses a day, they just go click, click on the previous one. So I thought, this is great. I'm going to start a new strip, even though I'm doing two others. <laughs> no one put me in an asylum at the time. <laughs> So I created Kevin and Kel, especially for the web, just to take advantage of that. Did you see any other comics online before you decided to start doing one? No, no. <laughs> I mean, there were. I mean, there was Doctor. Yeah, Fun, there were other. And, there, yeah. Um, uh, some terrific ones. Um, so I'm not the first by any means, but I was just taking advantage of this new ability to tell stories. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, I, I started Bruno in college, and I did it for a couple of years, and then I wasn't sure what to do with it. There was sort of a starting syndicate that kind of picked me up, and nothing happened. It was, it was uh, and so I was sort of wondering if, if I should continue it, what I should do next. And uh, I didn't own a computer. I, you know, I was working at, you know, like washing dishes or something. And um, I had a friend in California in the computer industry, and he had a website. And uh, and he had Amazing. and he had no content because he was a uh, you know he was a computer geek he wasn't an artist at all and um, 
So he wrote me and he said, well, you know, I would love to put your comic on my website. So I would draw the comic and I would go to Kinko's and photocopy it and then snail mail it to California where he would scan it in. <laughs> and, and every now and then I'd rent some time at Kinko's to go online to see what it looked like on the website. But, um, and I did that for a year or so before I, I then got like a better illustration job and I, and I um, got a computer and was able to you know, scan it in myself and I, take care I of did it. exactly the same thing. Because <laughs> the stuff I was doing on CompuServe, I was sending to Doug Pratt, who um, ran, ran the CompuServe Buddies Forum. Wow. I would take it to Kinko's, get a photocopy, I would snail mail it to him, and mm -hmm. he would do the scanning and put it on the comics forum. Mm -hmm. So you guys had a web comic <laughs> before you had a computer. That's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that's <laughs> something. Yes, I, I came along late enough that I could be inspired by those who came before me. I um, used to draw, a, like, like so many web cartoonists, especially in the 90s, I started out doing a comic strip in my um, college newspaper. Actually, I had one in high school as well, but then in college I did a regular strip. And I enjoyed doing comic strips so much that by the time I got to the end of college, I was feeling bad that I wouldn't be able to keep drawing a comic strip. And then some of my friends said, look, there are comics on the internet. Um, and they, show, and they showed me some web comics, and um, like so many people, my first thought was, oh, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, the first web comic I got really into was Pete Abrams' Slucky Freelance, and Pete's here at the convention, you should totally see him. Mm -hmm. And I read Kevin and Kel really early, too, and Bruno. Mm -hmm. And um, so like a month after I graduated from college, um, I set up a website and started posting Narvonic. At the time, I was living in like the spare room of somebody's house in California, um, and um, I would have to sneak out at night into their living room to use my computer, um, so I wasn't bothering them. Um, it was an <laughs> uncomfortable arrangement. And um, I would have to get up there and go onto my dial-up internet, obviously, and um, I scanned the strips and touched them up on uh, Microsoft Paint, because I didn't have like Photoshop or anything like that, and then I wrote the whole website in HTML on the note, like the computer notepad, the Microsoft notepad. Um, so I just uploaded from like notepad and MS Paint, um, which is why the early, one reason the early Narvonic strips look the way they do, <laughs> um, which is blurry. Um, so, and it was a while before I got any more advanced than that technologically. But um, I was able to get a website and I had a vague idea of what a webcomic looked like because there were other webcomics around by, by 2000. Um, I went to uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, and I majored in comic books. Got a degree right. in it. <laughs> Mom's so proud. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a school. Actually, yeah, that. when when your older brother fails out of gym class and and drops out of art college, you're you're going to college <laughs> for comic books. You're going to college. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> so so yeah, no, the, I I thank my brother for setting the bar real low. Um, and I had a, a housemate, and he was working on a drawing of an ogre. And I said, that's not a homework assignment. Why are you bothering to, to draw that? And he said, oh, well, a, a fan wanted me to do, you know, do, commissioned this art for, uh, uh, for him. And, and I looked at him and went, you got a fan? How do you, how do you have a fan? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing the same homework assignments as you are. How, how do you have fans? I, I want to get fans. <laughs> <laughs> and you did. I, I did. But, Very quickly. You know, when, when you have that, that little kid wish of, I, I want to be, be famous, you, you don't really think about, uh, like, buying food. Uh, <laughs> there's, there, I love the, hearing the uh, Where Are They Now stories uh, uh, on VH1 of the hair bands who would have the, the groupies come by and they have the fans come by. They're like, yeah, yeah, dude, come on. Come over and hang out and watch us uh, watch us practice. Could you bring a pizza <laughs> with you? Um, I, I did a show in Michigan and and some fans came to the table and was like, "We want to take you out to dinner. We work at Red Robin. We want to go take you there." And I went, I went, "Oh, you work? Then that's near here. That means you're you're local. You have an apartment here. Can I sleep on your couch?" <laughs> and they're like, "Well, where are you staying?" And I'm like, "In the parking lot. I'm sleeping in a van." Uh, between these two pirates, one of them's getting kind of handsy, so and I'd, I'd really like to take a shower tonight. Uh, so could I could I sleep on your couch tonight? And the look on the face of the fan going, but you're 
famous. <laughs> internet famous. What, what you, yeah. yeah. Inter- oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and even that, there's there. I I adore that you can. Uh, my brother, uh, my brother's girlfriend turned to him and said, "What does Jenny do?" And and my brother thought about it for a minute. He said, "She's queen of the geeks." <laughs> <laughs> I looked around at a convention. And I went, "Yeah, this is awesome. I, 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 these are my people. I love these people." And. And and it, especially it's doing a, a autobiographical strip. The people who identify mm-hmm. with it are people who are like you know I, I do comics about me and people say oh my god that reminds me of my sister or my friends and and so I've you know I've I found my people or my people find me that not as creepily as you think. Um, <laughs> and and it's this very odd. I saw in uh, uh, so they might be giants came and and a friend did an interview with them at uh, the local uh, small indie uh, radio station. And when they were leaving the radio station, there was a couple of kids there with getting their autographs. You know, hey, will you sign my CD? And some some ladies were crossing the street in the parking lot, and they stopped us and said, "Who are those guys that that they have these people asking them for autographs? We we don't know who they are." And, and we said, "Oh, well, they might be giants." <laughs> they they might are they not they, <laughs> they're about to be or and I realize that that in you know you can you can do work that a certain group of people adore you know that that you they they love your stuff but then you go to the grocery store that I was at Kinko's mm-hmm. and I was printing off some comics and they said well, what's that and I said it's a web comic and they said what's a web comic um, or a comic you, they still make those yes yeah. <laughs> So. Well, there's a saying that on the internet, everyone is famous for 15 people. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've got my 15. Yeah. Well, now, are they true fans? Like, I hate that term. Because <laughs> I, I, I consider myself a true fan of some stuff that I just can't afford to buy yeah. this stuff. So. I, I'm a true fan of Rodin. Fuck if I'm going to be able to buy one of his pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I have 14. I'm working on that one more. Yeah, that right. one extra one Does that pushes you count? over the edge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you don't get to count totally your mom. Counts. Yeah, 13. My mom's here, by the way. <laughs> oh, so sorry. Yeah. Hi, mom. <laughs> it's going to be edited. Oh, crap. What did I just talk about? I had my, some, people, some people said, your parents know that you do. <laughs> you have comics. Are you kidding me? Terrible. Like, my, mom, my mom thinks I need to do more comics about Jesus smoking pot. Those are her favorite ones. <laughs> <laughs> and she turned to me, she said, you can't call yourself a feminist anymore. You haven't had a good, good loud rant in months. <laughs> you haven't threatened anyone's li- lives in, in years. Do, uh, do your parents... What yeah. do your parents well, think of? Well, speaking of parents, right now my wife, who is a saint, is showing my parents around Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. Um, she should apply for sainthood. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, but yes, my uh, mom collects all of my comic strips from the newspaper. She cuts them Aww. out and puts them into albums. Oh, Aww. wow. Was she excited when you, like, you get the cover story in the National Cartoon Society newsletter yeah. last month? Well, I showed it to her Friday night. For the first time, and she was, oh, uh, we gotta get copies. How do you get copies? <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Chris? How does your family feel about uh, their about your comics? They're New Englanders, so I never know what they actually feel. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, you know, they, they're supportive. <laughs> they, uh, you know, they, um, they're, they're encouraging that, uh, that I do what, you know, what I love, um, and are, you know, um, are, uh, I was gonna say, and they're sad that I'm failing at it, <laughs> but, um, but you know, um, it's been a rough year. So uh, yeah, they um, they're really supportive, and uh, my mom reads it every day. Like she'll actually send me emails occasionally. Oh, it's really funny that this character did that. And you do very family friendly comics. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's pretty, that helps. The reason one isn't as much, but my mom <laughs> always like if I have a book out first day, she buys it. And my dad, I send him the comp copy a couple months later, and he <laughs> doesn't say anything. But you know, I'm <laughs> generally nice. And yeah, that's supportive. my experience. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're okay, folks, I guess. <laughs> Parental support is important. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom uh, is getting on me about getting uh, everyone to sign release forms because it's everyone's in my comic. Mm. It's autobiographical. So, mm. you know, it's friends, family members. And it's a little bit odd when when she, she said, you have, you have to make sure your siblings sign a release form. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, to lay, laying the groundwork for future fights. <laughs> uh, and and it, it is a bit odd going up to uh, boyfriends, brothers, sisters, uh, best friends going, hey, I love you. Um, could you sign this? 
<laughs> this release form so that I can I can keep you in the comic and if bad things ever happen, uh, don't get sued. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, wrong. speaking of which, Jenny, you were like one of the earliest like autobiographical web cartoonists. I doubt it. Yeah. Like I, how how did you get the idea of doing that? Um, in college, I would if something funny would happen, I'd do a little cartoon about it. Of uh, you know, we we went and uh, uh, some God, with some of the earlier comics of the dorm life, and and you know, uh, getting the care package from my 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 uh, dorm room's mom uh, roommate's mom, who would send us pixie sticks, the can version of uh, ca of uh, uh, icing, and <laughs> rum. <laughs> <laughs> and every once in a while, we'd find ourselves playing cards at at six at five a.m. Going, if we were in crew, we'd be getting up right now. <laughs> and doing little cartoons about that. Um, and it was actually, you know, the autobiographical strip came first, and then somebody said, "Hey, you should put that on on the internet as a web comic." And I said, "What's a web comic?" Mm. Um, and it was a way to keep drawing every day. And it wasn't until about two thousand six that I was like, "Oh, you could." sell things and make not a living wage but you know an, an income <laughs> um, and yeah there I, I have I, I when I graduated from college I realized to be an artist I either had to be uh, get used to being poor or become a professional waitress <laughs> um, and it is that okay either I I do the job that, that makes the paycheck and has dental and everything and and not really like what I do eight hours a day, but then have the car that works and health insurance and yeah. things like that, uh, job security. Or uh, I could work 15 hours a day at the thing I love <laughs> and eat ramen <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe see if I can, I can bum off my mom's health insurance for a little bit longer. Um, and so there is that kind of, and you really start, uh, at least uh, I've started to, to appreciate, you know, um, dental. Yes, and, and I would like yeah. that. Now, I, I do know how to change out a garbage disposal myself. So I just, I just start went learning. To, I just went to the dentist for the first time in 10 years. <laughs> no, no, not being able to pay the plumber. Did he get ranted at? I, no, I, I went to the dentist for the first time in 10 years, like a few weeks ago. But no cavities. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah. You could have Very saved that exciting. money going to the dentist. But I have to go back in a month to get extra cleaning because I couldn't get all the plaques scraped <laughs> off in a single <laughs> session. So they're making me come back. But other than that, they work. The teeth work. <laughs> Instead of having dental care, I just drink a lot of milk. <laughs> I figured that would work. Yeah, yeah, I figured that would work as a cheap substitute for a dentist. <laughs> So actually, one thing I'm wondering about you two elder statesmen over here. <laughs> um, the men's room we go. The in. men's, yeah, it's <laughs> over here. Um, is it um, you got started before there was a lot of like preconceptions about what web comics were, what they were about? Um, around the time we were starting, there was definitely an idea that they there's a lot of like geeky stuff in web comics. A lot of sci I obviously did like a science fiction mm -hmm. comic, a lot of science fiction and fantasy, the the, the classic two gamers on a couch genre. But you guys kind of started before that, and your comics are very different uh, than that. You you have like a sort of um, slice of life, like it's fan, you know, it's fantasy and that it has anthropomorphic animals, but it's well, that was yeah. the, that was the whole reason for me to, because I said I wanted to do longer stories, and what I wanted to do longer stories about was about people coming together, um, which is about what the theme of Kevin and Kelly is: a rabbit and a wolf who have a very blended family including their own offspring, a carnivorous bunny. Um, but I wanted to show a working marriage that uh, where, two, where the husband and wife aren't at each other's throats the whole time, that it's a loving, supportive marriage, and in a way that showed how they had to overcome differences to get to that point. And at the time, I wasn't thinking of doing a webcomic. Um, I was thinking of doing something that was inspired by Pogo. And then when the light clicked on when I came on CompuServe and I said, hey, you can have archives, then it all came together. I can take this concept that I have, I can tell long stories with it on the web, and the two melded. Um, that's how it came to be. 
And Chris, all of your all of, you've done several comics now, and they're all like very different, and they're very different from your standard web comics. I mean, Bruno, there was definitely nothing else like Bruno yeah. when like I was started reading comics around t- web comics around two thousand. There 2000. still isn't. There still isn't. <laughs> yeah. It's the only strip like that. Could you like explain what what Bruno is like? Is well, the trick is for to the, have for the few people who are not familiar with it. To have no idea, sort of have sort of a uh, uh, an. Asperger's sort of approach to comics to like you just don't get what you're supposed to do no matter how many comics you read um, so with Bruno it was I mean it, it's I, it was, I was inspired that there's no strong female leads in comics there was Kathy for better for worse Sylvia and Dykes to watch out for and um, and I really liked them I had a lot of strong intelligent female friends I was like this is dumb so I thought oh, I'll do my own didn't realize where it would go for 11 years. And, uh, and I was very inspired by, um, by Sylvia, by Nicole Hollander, who does a lot of her strips, her one panel with lots of words and details. And, and that's also sort of a description of Bruno to some extent, although the two strips aren't very similar um, other than that. But yeah, it just, um, I mean, since there wasn't any web comics at that point, really, um, yeah, well, I didn't have a computer, so I didn't, I, I didn't know that there was one. So I, it didn't even occur to me that there was. And uh, so I was looking to newspapers for inspiration. You know, so I was looking to Sylvia, and I was looking to, um, you know, other strips. You know, Bloom County and s- strips that I really enjoyed. But I'm, a, um, I, I'm a big believer that that uh, that well, for for me, anyways, that uh, there's sort of a shelf life for the things I create where I get. At some point, I feel like I'm trying to make it funny. I'm trying to write the strips, and and I feel it's just it's it's they start to almost peter out, and so I've changed projects as it's happened. Um, and then Little D, I was aiming towards newspapers, so I created this strip that was a very daily newspaper oriented. And of course, I start creating it right when the whole newspapers are declining and, <laughs> and disappearing, and so, you know another brilliant business move. And then um, and so and so it didn't work. I was with in development with United for a bit, and then um, and that didn't pan out. So I uh, so I thought, well, I'll do something that's actually oriented to the internet. And rather than trying to, you know, do two geeks on a couch playing video games, <laughs> I thought, well, what communities are there online? And uh, you know, and and so science fiction came to mind. I really, I've been reading a lot of science fiction, loved it, and so um, and there aren't many science fiction web comics. Oddly, I have no idea why, mm-hmm. and, um, and I thought, well, this will be fun. And rather than trying to, you know, duplicate another, you know, girl genius or schlock mercenary or star slip, I thought, I thought, well, what's the story I want to tell? Um, that's my problem. I want to do what I want to do, not what I'm <laughs> supposed to do. That's the common thread, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and with the web, I can do it. I just, you know, can't, you know, mon- not monetize. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, yes. But. Oh, that is a good question. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was I was going to say, uh, 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 do what I want to do what I want to do, mm. uh, and especially on on the web, uh, I realize that to get published, uh, I don't draw like Marvel or DC or Image or even a lot of the indie stuff, and so I have to do like I post post it online because I don't really conform to anybody else's genre. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't have an editor going, who's your target audience? <laughs> yeah. I I had a convention where I had a 16-year-old girl with blue, green hair say, "Oh my god, you you're, you're com- I love your comic. It reminds me of me and my friends." I had a housewife come by say the same thing. I had a a biker with a big <laughs> long beard say the same thing. And when I had a big football player guy come up with a baseball cap and he comes up to me and goes, I really like your comic, yeah. Everybody in my dance troupe reads it. They really like it. <laughs> I have no idea who my target audience is. And and on the, the best thing about web comics is that you have a direct communication mm-hmm. from the artist to the to the reader, that there is nobody in between, no no editors, no publishers, no, you know, and and, and the worst thing about web comics is that there's a direct communication between <laughs> yes, the, yes. the artist and the reader. Yeah. And, and there is a balance because um, the internet is, is a wonderful and terrifying place <laughs> um, that, that I think that we, and I myself have also used the internet of that, um, 
My boyfriend used the term uh, uh, keyboard courage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That things are said on the internet and done on the internet mm -hmm. that n nobody would actually do or say yeah. to your face or in real life. Mm -hmm. um, and so on one hand, people do take liberties with, I've been reading this comic every day for six mm -hmm. years, and so it's a part of me, so I have a feeling of validation of telling you how it needs to be. Um, and I think I, there was a writer who said that she had readers come up to her and say, you're writing it wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're not, that's not what they would do. Yeah. Um, and, and there is a certain imbalance of um, you do what you want and you have these. And on the other hand, uh, I am influenced by the readers of mm -hmm. they loved one of the characters that was a fly through. And they loved her so much that she, you know, I had her come back mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she would have just, you know, puttered out because I didn't think she was that interesting. But the rest of the community went, oh my god, that was awesome, yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. And on the other hand, I did a character that I loved and thought was so brilliant and nobody cared. So yeah. that one puttered out. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a certain amount of you never know. Hearing, yeah. hearing the screams of the masses, but then not necessarily listening to them. Mm -hmm. But that's and it's still an improvement over a newspaper, how, how things were in the mm -hmm. 80s when I was just doing Fast Track, and I never heard from anyone. I mm -hmm. never knew when something yeah. was working, I never knew when something wasn't working. I was literally flying blind. I love getting the feedback, it just, mm -hmm. yeah. even when it's bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's no, I like the reason I that I'm really glad that I do get feedback, because I yeah. experienced what it was like literally doing comics in a vacuum. It's mm -hmm. great. Well, especially the conventions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where again, uh, I can get an email saying, "Oh my God, I love your mm -hmm. comic." It reminds me of me and my friends, but it's not quite the same as having mm -hmm. the green-haired teenager and mm -hmm. the football player go, "I identify with you," and I'm like, "Really? Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome." <laughs> um, and, and it's this community that is uh, in high school. Anime was just starting for me. Uh, I think I wouldn't tell you what year I was in. Yeah. <laughs> And, and to go to a convention where you are the only kid in your high school that's interested in this small mm -hmm. genre, and you go to a convention and there's hundreds and sometimes thousands of more people who like the same thing you do. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I do see that artists who are working in a vacuum and they come to the convention and go, wait, you mean the number on that hit counter <laughs> actually represents something? Yeah. Represents a person. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you guys deal with, uh, the positive is amazing, mm -hmm. but unfortunately the way that humans are, are rigged, <laughs> <laughs> we, we remember and recognize negative, it's a survival instinct of, you know, when, when, you run th when the rabbit runs through the <laughs> field and the hawk swoops over and scares the crap out of the rabbit, the adrenaline kicks in and makes you remember, don't go into that field because the hawk is there. So unfortunately, when, I get, when you get the email that says, you know, you suck, uh, That's the modern you know, equivalent of a hawk is somebody yeah. calling you a dick on the internet. Oh yeah. yeah. Then then you unfortunately you remember that a lot more than you remember the fifty other emails going, you know, this is awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so how have you guys learned to um, basically learn to take the good with the bad because like I said, for about ten years I did a script in a vacuum, a literal vacuum. I would get maybe one letter mm -hmm. in the mail, in the in the snail mail a year. That was feedback. Um, so I did say, okay, if I'm going to go this route, go on the internet, I want to get feedback, both pro and con, it's still better than what I had before. So when, when I get the you sucks, I say, well, that's part of the game. Aw, gosh, you're so positive. Because <laughs> <laughs> the other option is to just stew on it. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, in, uh, I, in high school, I had an uh, English teacher who was very, very liberal with the red pen. He just, the whole paper, he just cover it. And it, it, at first, it really upset me. And then I realized that they were all just suggestions. And I recognized he was an intelligent guy. So I'd say, oh, he thinks this sentence isn't working. Why? And I might not take his suggestion, but I would, you know, look for other, you know, to see what, what his issue was and, and if there was ways I can improve it so it address that issue as well. And so I got very used to take getting, uh, so I, you know, in doing freelance for years, I used to people saying, oh, no, just redo this. I don't like it. And you just have to be like, OK, yeah. you're paying me. Um, but uh, uh, interesting that's taken me a little while, an interesting thing is I, um, I have open, um, people can post uh, um, responses mm -hmm. to the strips when I post them. 
And sometimes people are like, oh, that was really dumb, you know. And yeah, I'm like, that's rude. People just yeah. say that to you? Um, well, not quite like that. It's, uh, they're like, that, that was an awful, very intelligent thing you did. <laughs> <They're> very, <laughs> I have a very sort of high-minded audience here. Um, but the, the thing that I've learned is if I disagree with them, suddenly there's this argument, or other people come to my defense or whatever. And so I realized I've, I've been really practicing at writing comments and reply because like I'm, I, you know, I don't care. I'm like, okay, you don't like it. That's okay. But, but so I try to find a response that recognizes what they say, totally diffuses it, and makes me look like like a good guy. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. like I'm like, oh, you know, that's that's a really good thought. It's not agreeing with them. It's not. It's just saying like it's this. It's a nowhere comment that just kills it yeah. and makes me look like I'm someone who's like, yeah, yeah I, I can, like I can take it. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not. So I have to work <laughs> on that you to are. make it. You know. I I love that term, the suggestions. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And I heard uh, Scott Kurtz had said, pointed out, and I had found the same thing to be true, that when you got the email that said, you suck, you reply with, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. And, and you know, well, I, if only I, Scott Kurtz could take that advice. Well, <laughs> well, and, and He's so he, used to it. Well, they yeah. said that, uh, oh my gosh. You, know, that you usually get an email back by, from, the, from the person going, Wait, you read my email? <laughs> you're a real Wait, person. You, you know, you actually, yeah, the, you're a real person of thing. Like you're so used to sending stuff out mm -hmm. into the into the abyss mm -hmm. that when you get the response back, you're like, oh wait, somebody heard that. <laughs> uh, and invariably, I think every single you suck email that I've gotten, and I've got, gone back with, I'm sorry you feel that way. I get another email back going, oh my god, you, oh wait, okay, you you misunderstood. Well, I didn't actually mean you suck. You, you <laughs> misunderstood what I meant. What I meant to say was, and usually either it's they were in a bad place when you know they sent, and they're upset about something else. Has nothing to do with me. Or there is a difference of what is what is intended, what is thought, what is said, and what is heard. Mm -hmm. That I've sent out the emails that it's like either I'm being sarcastic or I'm being like I think I'm being cute. And then when it goes into the black and white world of email, it comes out as something horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so I, I find that usually, and, and, and the few times that it is malicious of, you know, of you suck, um, and I respond, you know, I, I think I got a post on YouTube or something. I, I think that uh, a previous uh, panel, we made the, the, the joke about a relationship of if, if all of the yelling and screaming and hate mail is one-sided, it's really hard to, to sustain the, the relationship one-sided. Um, that I sent out a reply of, well, I'm, I'm sorry you feel this way. <laughs> and he just continued on with the same spewing of the same thing, no, no thought, no, no intelligent response. And I said, oh, oh, you're an idiot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. okay yeah. I don't, this has nothing to do with me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah no, I hate that. Um, I got my first negative review from the Comics Journal, which I'm sure shocks anyone who knows the Comics Journal. Um, and yeah, for years I can remember every word, of every uh, negative thing oh from that review. Oh but I must have gotten better because I can't remember what they said anymore. It was actually not about Narbonne, it was about um, Trunk Town, a strip I did with uh, Tom Hart years ago. Um, I've only gotten actually flamed in my comments once. It was a while ago on Skin Horse, and um, it was a disgruntled Narbonic fan, of course. Um, <laughs> and yeah, no, it was, it was okay. Right. You know, it basically. Um, yeah, I don't like getting, neg obviously I don't like getting um, negative feedback, but um, negative feedback that's on the nose is actually, actually hurts me more because they're right and I have to fix it then. <laughs> um, I felt that they were not right in this case, but that's obviously my, my thought. So um, yeah, I didn't really, I don't respond much to, um, I don't respond much to feedback in general. I mean, if somebody emails me like a note, I will obviously respond. I always, always, always respond to email, but as far as comments online go, just like anonymous posts or what or whatnot, I don't I don't usually respond, um, and I don't get a lot of negative comments directly on my site. I think people are kind of scared of me <laughs> <laughs> because I am very frightening. Um, you are mighty. I that am mighty why. indeed. I am mighty indeed. Um, but I always 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 respond if I get personal emails from somebody criticizing something or having feedback or. And I've gotten I've gotten really useful criticism sometimes. Um, there was late in the 
late in the run of Narvonic, P. Campbell like sort of emailed me out of the blue. And he's another long timer. Mm -hmm. He could be on this panel. He's here. He's here at this convention. There's too many. There's too many web comics old timers at this convention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he emailed me and had like some criticisms about the strip and the way it was going, and had ideas that it was actually really useful. And I um, I incorporated them into the strip. When I get to that point, like I'm rerunning Narvonic with director's commentary with like commentary now. And when I get to that point in the strip, I'll talk about. Um, T. Campbell's ideas and which strips he influenced. I basically do a week of strips to um, deal with his. I hate you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and I had some more French cheese. It was awesome. Right. Yeah. You need you. sheep over there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh man, you, you can buy it from the guy with the goat sitting next to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fifty cent cheese, and then yeah. you come home and say, "I want goat cheese." Well, this is five dollars. <laughs> yeah, we could all talk about goats a lot longer. Well, Bill's still doing the same well, comic. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. never yeah. stopped. Yeah, well, the thing is, is that I've I committed the cardinal sin of falling in love with my characters. Well, um, I want to just say, I'm from Atlanta. I used to be a big theater for, and I kept up with Kevin and Paul through that, and didn't realize it was like comic until 30 minutes ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll get now I have to re-fall in love with the characters. Well, thanks. And, and Jenny, you've done the same comic. Oh yeah, no, I I. I won't. You're gonna have to. I won't be finishing it anytime soon. I, you're gonna have to pull the pen from a cold, dead hand. Uh, I. Uh, but I do have a friend who. Um, she's finishing up her plot line. She's she's gonna end it, and she's she's starting to write and design a new web comic. And she's. I, I don't know if it's skeevy so much as survival uh, that <laughs> she's designing a web comic, and she's now that she's done a web comic, she's designing characters in the web comic that will be easily marketing uh -huh. marketable. That's what I should have done. She's designing one character so she can make chibis and, and plushies of it and make merchandise of it. Um, and so on one hand, you know, the, uh, the artists are, are being aghast and going, uh -huh. you know, how dare you turn it into consumerism and it's not true art. And she's go like, yes, girls, go yeah. for yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no. She has to buy diapers. So yeah. she's like, no, no, how can I, how can I design, how can I do a webcomic about golfing and doctors? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And cats. So. I've been there. <laughs> how about you, Chris? How did you, how did you end your strip? Um, well, I tried to, I mean, they didn't, there wasn't really a storyline for Bruno or Little D, um, so I found, like, something that felt like a good, satisfying ending. I brought in all the secondary characters. Um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and it was, I mean, like, Bruno, it just felt like I didn't have anything more to say, really, for the characters, that it was, it was just going to be tired and dragged out if I didn't wrap it up. And this, the same with Little D, it was, um, in the beginning, every week, I was like, ah, oh, that's funny, and mm -hmm. rah, and then, like, after a few years, I'm like... What's funny? Let's see. It's autumn. That means they're raking again. I've done <laughs> done raking with a wheelbarrow. With a what do I do now? And and I'm like, okay, it's time to <laughs> move to new projects. And my new one actually has a plot. It's a planned three-year project. So uh, that'll be yeah, easy. Yeah, my Narbonic had a planned story arc to it. So I just ended it when the story was over. Which yeah. took. I thought it was going to be five years, and it ended up taking six. But um, it ended up pretty much the way I wanted it to. One yeah. thing I've been careful of is not getting into a situation that I can't change myself out of it. Like, mm. uh, like mm. I don't keep the characters in a situation where I would just run out of gags. Mm -hmm. I, just, I keep throwing new stuff at them. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. probably hate me for it, but it keeps the strip fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rather than coming up with a new strip, reinventing <laughs> within the yeah. strip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah re creating new characters. I created a new character in Fast Track last year named Bethany, and people just seem to love her. They just hook to, to my tail and go, I love Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> Questions, comments, yeah. concerns? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. You. Okay. Right there. <laughs> um, I'll let you sit on this. How does the prospect of you know, success or the prospect of you know, financial success of the strip affect what risks you're willing to take and so forth in either starting new strips or plot lines and so forth? I think at all. I, I've never been financially successful, and it's never impacted any of my decisions. <laughs> well, that, that may be why I've never been success, uh, as successful. <laughs> I, just, I don't think in terms of those, I just, I kind of do three PG-rated strips. Mm -hmm. So I think in terms of, is it, will this fit into a PG-rated uh, story? I don't really think in terms of uh, finances. 
Yeah, I'm worried about that actually, because like none of my strips are PG rated. They're not really filthy or anything, but they do have like adult situations. And, naughty um, bits. Naughty, not even <laughs> barely. Um, Skin Horse has more naughty bits than Narvonic, but it's still not very naughty. But yeah, it's yeah. still, I mean, they're still, and they've, I mean, beyond that, they have adult characters with adult concerns, and they're not really interesting to all ages. Um, I do kind of wish I had an all ages comic like. Um, like Chris has and like Phil has, especially like Chris has, because I love little D. Um, and I, I'd like to do an all ages comic, um, especially so that when I'm at cons and people come by with their kids and say, um, "This has cute characters, should I read it?" and I said, and I say, "Probably not, because there's gay sex in it." I, I tell the kids that it's about taxes and cleaning your room. It's boring. It's, very good. it's for mommies and daddies. Yes, but I would like to do an all ages strip at some point, just because it would be it would be an interesting it would be an interesting challenge and it would be an interesting audience to reach. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did Little Mel, but Little Mel is <laughs> Little Mel is not even like all ages appropriate. It very quickly started getting ridiculous and violent and yeah, so that's yeah, that it's Mel. Yeah. Uh, when I created Bruno, it was just because I didn't really know what I was doing, so there's no marketing thought in that uh, in the college newspaper. Um, but Little D, I was aiming towards newspapers, and it was about it was either the third or the fourth attempt I had at creating a strip I thought would be good for papers before I, you know, played it out for a while. And then, um, so that was the marketing that went to that, is would this work for newspapers? Would this be funny, all ages kind of things? And then Space Trawler, um, I did think I was like, well, you know, what's, what's something I want to do that also would work well online, that I could, you know, there's science fiction communities where I can link up with their science fiction conventions, so, so that I would be able to market it, but I wasn't thinking any more specific than that. Um, I think you and I need to go for the Hugo Award next year. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, yeah. The folios, folios have withdrawn. are down. The folios have officially withdrawn after winning three years in a row for yeah. Girl Genius. So this is yeah. our year for my next year, our yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because well, we both do sci-fi comics. Our, our goal yeah. should be to get nominated because uh, yeah. Schlock Mercenary will Schlock win. Schlock Mercenary gets nominated every year. Well, it's going to win because it has his bigger n It's based on popularity. He has bigger year, numbers. We, you, you need he has to bigger numbers. Try, he has try, bigger numbers. Don't give he's, up. He's, he's here. We're here. Don't he's, give he's up. He's got it in the bag. I've, we'll I, try. We'll try. Yeah, we've got we've got the love. We, you know, yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Campaign. That's right. Uh. No, there's um, I so I apologize. I have no segue. That's okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no. I think isn't it more like that? Anyway, yeah, yeah, lean okay. forward. Wrong segue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. the the as far as marketing and and and. Uh, uh, the consumerism and the and the how money has an impact in it. What what's kind of the the catch twenty two that I'm starting to see with web comics is that it's mostly created by the artist. The mm -hmm. artist is running the site. Yeah. The artist creating it. The artist mindset isn't very conduct conducive to the business side of it. The numbers. Mm -hmm. The the bookkeeping. And I always saw uh, my 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 father was an artist and my mother was was the manager. And I kept seeing all these artis other artists who the, there was the artist and then there was the manager. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was really That's trying to find a manager that yeah. I could pay in Mickey. <laughs> um, yes. Because you didn't really I, know. You need that. There's a, there's a ton of different ways of Actually, making Howard Taylor Schlock Mercenary has that. <laughs> yeah. Well, he started out as the, as he started yeah. out in business and then he went to his, art. His so wife has taken over a lot of business well, stuff because no, it's too huge now. We're, well, because we're yeah. trying to, the, the artists are now trying to learn business. And uh, and I would I was just worried about drawing the comic and getting it updated. And I hadn't quite figured out, I did merchandise, but that's a whole lot mm -hmm. of, Taking the inventory, uh, printing the yeah. stuff, uh, and then hauling the stuff. I, I stuff my own envelopes and take my own orders and do all the shipping. And there's only so much of that you can do, mm -hmm. so much of the income. And so now I've got this boyfriend who uh, he figured out ad revenue for me, which I had nice. tried but I didn't understand it enough because it was based in uh, the site has to be uh, text-based so that the advertisers can search for you because if you do a Google search, Google can't see images. Um, so right. if you have a whole bunch of pictures of, of kilts, uh, <laughs> guys, guys who, yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the stores who sell kilts mm -hmm. don't know that you have a comic about kilts. Uh, and so you have to figure out the, the text to put kilts in the text so they can see yeah. that your site is about kilts and then they know to buy advertising on there. And that was a whole, and there's, there's a trick with advertisers and stuff that I couldn't wrap my brain around. So he did it for me. Um, and he also figured out, he, he's, he's figuring out all of the details of, of uh, the, the coding and stuff, and he found out like buttons, Facebook like oh, buttons, yeah. Twitter uh, like yeah. buttons. For the first time ever, I am getting paid for 
doing the comic. Yay. Which it used to be, you got paid for selling books. Yeah. You got paid for yeah. doing extra stuff. You got paid for um, doing, I think they're selling books, making t-shirts. You got paid for being a retailer. Mm -hmm. You didn't get paid for drawing the comic. The comic was free, adver it was advertising yeah. for the merchandise. Yeah. So yeah. for the first time ever, I was getting an income that I didn't have to do anything other than <laughs> drawing a comic, which, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> um, and then with the like button, that had more people, if the comic was good or funny, mm -hmm. more people came to see it and I got more advertising revenue. More. For the first that. time, I got paid for doing a funny comic, mm -hmm. which didn't happen before. <laughs> so suddenly I had this new incentive of, not only do I have to do a comic, I have to do a good comic. So you get paid more. <laughs> yes. And so I had this positive uh, right. reinforcement for, if it's funny, I'm gonna get paid. <laughs> And I can upgrade to the to the to the ramen with the with the with the dried with the vegetables pack. in it oh. with the extra flavor packets and oh yeah I get I get the I get the miso soup with the dried uh, 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 noodles and not the noodles the uh, uh, onions in it so yeah I get to upgrade my ramen. Is there another okay. panel here about yeah, to happen? Yeah, we have to end. On that uplifting note, okay, I think we're finished. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, come come see us. We all yep. have tables in yep. the. Thank in you. The come by Thank you, stuff. everyone. Thank you. Thank you.